I'm Laura Flanders. I'm the host of The Laura Flanders Show, which is a program where we interview forward-thinking people from the worlds of arts, politics, business, and economics. Well, there's a world of initiatives. Uh, one is this sort of efflorescence of cooperatives around the country, meaning not just consumer co-ops that people are familiar with, um, but worker-owned cooperatives. For example, in Chicago, one story that I didn't tell, in the fall of 2008, there was one factory where the workers, rather than be laid off and go home at the height of the recession, when people, half a million people were losing their jobs every month, this one factory in Chicago called Republic Windows and Doors, the workers decided to stay and occupy the plant. And at that time, they occupied the plant and in doing so were able to preserve the documentation that showed that the boss, rather than not making money, simply wanted to move out from under a union contract. And they were able to sue for back, pay, for back wages and um, money that was owed to them and get a severance package they would never have got. They kept their company in um, operation long enough for a new owner to come in. The new owner came in, operated the place for two years, and after two years laid the factory workers off again. And this time, because in the interim they had done, they had built relations, they had traveled around the country, they had become sort of celebrities by virtue of having resisted in that deep, dark winter of recession, they'd been put into contact with the folks in Argentina who had occupied and stayed in production in the factories. This time, so two years later, they decided they wanted to buy the factory themselves. So this small group of 17 to 18 former window makers, or window makers, mostly immigrant and black, speaking two languages, uh, decided we're going to try to make a go of this. And for the last two years, uh, they've been owning and operating the factory themselves. It's now called the New Era Windows Factory. Is it easy? No. Really, really hard. Really, really hard. First, the struggle to be able to buy the equipment in a world where the banks won't lend to them even when they have the capital of the experience and the community sweat and toil and their know-how and the machinery. Um, but then in the climate of the United States, in the still recovering from a recession or not recovering, trying to figure out how to start a new business, the first year was really hard, the second year has been much better. They are meeting their goals. Uh, they're making a go of it. I think what we're seeing is the visibility, the rising into visibility of a movement different from what we've associated with kind of hippie co-ops co and communes in the past. So really the profile of worker ownership and cooperative economics is changing and building on the history that exists in the United States going back to the age of slavery, of solidarity economics being the way that people of color especially survived under segregation and Jim Crow. So that history is being kind of um, resurfaced and experiments are happening all over and many will fail. Well, there's no question that after the recession, these topics and this question of an alternative way to run a business came into their own. These questions came into their own. I mean, 2008 with the massive unemployment that we saw and the failure to see wages grow in 30 years, people had very little to lose. As I said, we have 8 million workers who are missing from the formal labor economy. They're simply not participating. They've either given up looking for work or they're working in the underground economy. They're bartering. They're working for cash. They're working for each other. Uh, this has been a factor of necessity. I think now, after this many years, is when the analysis is happening to say, wow, this is happening, let's think about the design. Let's think about how we could connect up some of these initiatives and how we could articulate a critique, not of an individual system, but uh, not of an individual situation, but of the system, and start thinking of what a different sort of system might look like. How will these cooperatives um, work with each other? How do we create some uh, economies of scale? How do we bring some cooperatives to scale where they could really compete with traditional businesses. And you see new partners participating, trade unions, who in the 1970s were firmly against worker co-ops. For example, in Ohio, the steel company, the steel union, very much against co-ops in, in Pittsburgh. Two years ago, teaming up with Mondragon, developing a union model for worker-owned cooperatives, 
the home care workers in the Bronx have a union, the SEIU, uh, in their workplace uh, as part of their, their project, part of their uh, institution. Um, this is all brand new.